a cleaning person tries to move a heavy old bookcase and all of the story happens okay let's quickly have the diagram of the of the situation let's suppose that this is a bookcase okay we have the bookcase a force is applied tangentially I explained in our video where I talk about shear modulus and I describe what the tangential force means check this video you will understand a lot about tangential now suppose that a tangential force is being exerted on this bookcase this is the force the tangential force is 50 Newton okay these are the informations that we need it displaces the shelf horizontally of course that will bring about something like this because it is tangential it will cause something of that nature to occur on the body to cause this kind of displacement and note that 15 centimeter so that means the body is displaced 15 centimeter from here to here is 15 centimeter relative to the motionless bottom shelf now the width of the shelf that's 90 centimeter so we can have something of this nature 90 centimeter then if the object is displaced 15 centimeter the original height of the bookcase is 180 centimeter so we can have this 180 centimeter this is the displacement this is the displacement tangential force applied horizontally so according to the formula the shear modulus the shear modulus G which is the tangential force per unit area divided by the change that is the displacement the horizontal displacement of the solid upon the height of the solid which is 180 centimeter so in this case we can have it simplified as the tangential force with the height then the area and the change okay substituting the formula okay we know the tangential force that's 50 newton we know the height 180 delta x that's 15 centimeter then area we can find the area the area is the wideness that's 90 multiplied by the height of the shelf of each shelf times 30 2700 centimeter squared okay so eventually if we we should convert this so shear modulus the tangential force that's 50 multiplied by the height which is 180 centimeter upon the area which is 2700 centimeter squared multiplied by delta x which is 15 centimeter okay. if you do this on your calculator you should have 0 0.222 which is supposed to be 2 over 9 which is the same as 2 over 9 then we have 15 newton so we can have newton upon centimeter squared so centimeter squared centi is 10 raised to the power minus 2 squared that's centi raised that's exponential minus 4 
Newton per meter squared. So it can be simplified into 2 over 9. I can take 10 raised to power minus 4 upwards so that it becomes positive. So we can have Newton per meter squared. Newton per meter squared is the same thing as Pascal. And this is our answer. Since this is 0 0.222, 2, 2, if we multiply it by exponential 4, we can have something of this nature exponential 4 that will be 2 2 2 2 okay pascal so which is the same thing as 2.222 2, 2 kilo pascal we want to find the force that is needed to punch a hole in a steel. If you punch a round hole or a square hole or some other form of holes through a given thickness of metal, what you are just trying to do is to know the force that is required to punch the hole. In this case, suppose that we have a steel. You want to punch a hole in this steel so that it will look like this okay the punching force to the perimeter to the perimeter multiplied by the plate thickness multiplied by the strength the shear strength the reason is because for this punching to occur the shear stress the shear stress it must be greater than or equal shear strength that is the shear stress which is force upon the area the area in this case is the perimeter multiplied by the thickness is considered equal as the shear strength let's call this shear strength so we it implies that the punching force is the product of the perimeter, the thickness, and the shear strength. Now, the punching force for this question, the perimeter, the perimeter can vary depending on the kind of dimension you want to punch. If you punch a square, for a square hole, for a square hole the perimeter is 4L where L is the length of the square if you punch a round hole the perimeter is 2D I mean is pi D the perimeter is pi D where D is the diameter in this case we are going to have pi D and the D in this case is the diameter so we can have 1.46 exponential minus 2 multiplied by the thickness the thickness is 1.27 exponential minus 2 multiplied by the strength of the material which is 3.45 exponential 8 so we'll eventually have two zero zero nine six seven point three six seven nine if you use the calculator. So by approximately we can have two hundred point nine seven kilo newton. In my video I explain check this video 
I explain what ultimate shear strength, what it means. Check this video. Alright, let's solve another practice problem. Yeah, based on the last video, I really advise that you pause this video, then attempt it. Let's see your answer in the comment section. It will help you to practice this problem. Okay? The shear strength has been given as this. And then we have the thickness. Then we need the punching force. It's a square hole. Then the punching force, the punching force, which is equal to the perimeter of the of the dimension, multiplied by the thickness, and then multiplied by the shear strength. In this case, okay. We should have something of this nature the perimeter multiplied by the thickness multiplied by the shear strength the strength of the material so since we have a square then we are going to have four times l so that is four times the original length which is six millimeter six milli all right so the punching force the punching force is equal to four times six milli multiplied by the thickness which is 2.5 milli multiplied by the strength which is theory exponential eight if you do this correctly then you should have 18,000 Newton, which is the same thing as 18 kilo Newton. Right. In this problem, we want to find the shear strain. Recall that the shear modulus is the shear stress, is the shear stress upon the shear strain. So it implies that the shear strain, the shear strain bulk modulus. If the shear stress, we can find the shear stress using the shear stress is force upon the area, tangential force over area. And the force is given as I think I should just erase this. Okay. The force, the shear stress is force over area. The force is given as 3.8 exponential 7 upon the area which is 160 centimeter squared that's exponential minus 4 meter squared upon G so the shear stress is which is equal to 2375 then six zeros all right so if we have that here two three seven five then six zeros upon g where g is 15 exponential 10 so finally the shear strain is equal to which is equal to 0 0.015 it's three and it does not have the unit because the unit cancels out all right 